Hey, welcome back everyone to the Let's Play in Minecraft. I'm here back at home. Surprising, but I'm just here for this. This is the only place in my world I have cocoa beans growing. Isn't that pretty crazy? <gasps> I can make a cocoa bean factory, of course. I'm always needing brown dye, and I come to these two poles in my world. Oh wait, I forgot, I gotta replant them. I also have a place in my pantry, but that's all. Okay, that gives me another idea. I need brown dye for a very specific reason. I'm making benches throughout my world. Um, so as you see, this is a normal bench here. It looks all right. Can't really use it though. It's just for looks and you can't have it flush against a wall. You always have to have it out, but you can also make a new bench. Let's say against this would almost be perfect now that I think of it. So we're gonna get rid of those two blocks. I'm actually gonna put concrete there. Ooh, brown beds. Brings back memories. But we're gonna put a bed here, and then we're gonna put signs on the side and look at that. It has a little white on it. I don't really mind that, but it can be a bench against a wall, and it's also functional in case you're running through the city and need to sleep real fast. That one might not stay right there, but that gives you an idea of what it's like. Or we could even do one double the length. Yeah, that's not bad. Nothing like mining for some coal in some back rooms of redstone. I heard clicking and I came up here to stop it because I turned off these blinking lights a while ago, but I left something in there and it's been clicking all this time. So that's been causing updates all this time. I don't, if I'm not using it anymore, don't want it to cause issues. I'm getting a little sidetracked here. <laughs> I got down into the lab and I've just been doing things in here. You guys doing good? Good. What on earth? Guard SC1? What are you doing? Oh my gosh, you're going to my house. You are somewhat of an OG. I can't let you die. Come with me. Want a piece? So, I have been working on my canal. Taking a mighty long time, that's for sure. <laughs> so, basically I just placed a beacon, I cleared it all out, and now I'm running through. First I went through with granite, polished granite, oh no, it's not granite, it's andesite. But I created one continuous line, kind of zigzagging, just to break it up a little bit, because I'm keeping it stone to help me a lot. And I'm running through, placing in smooth stone and some unique patterns, just to make it you know, fit the vibe of a dystopian city. I am gonna run through and place pipes coming out every so often. I'm not gonna make them drain water though, because this is specifically for to carry shipping containers through. So once I get this finished, I will flood it with water and we can call it a day. Well, not really, there's still so much to do. This is so time consuming, but this is the kind of stuff that is so worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I got very distracted, right? I went from making a canal to planting cocoa beans. How did this happen? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as you can see, we now have a cocoa bean farm within the city. Again, at some point in time, I'm going to have every single farm possible in this world. I want to get to the point where we're powerful now. I think I deserve that. Um, so as you can see, we are in one of our town buildings. I decided to make this one into my little bean factory, which I really like. It fit perfect. It's a little snug in here, but I like it. I just went with the design where got water behind those pistons, flip this lever and drops them both on both sides. Makes all the beans go into these hoppers. Pretty simple design. Gathers them there. Made a staircase here. Um, Got to cover this up, but this is going to lead up to the office where one of you guys are going to live, as usual. Again, I'm going to have a business leader in every single one of these buildings. Oh, look, there's him. I forgot his name, but he's doing all right. I love that idea of you guys basically running this city. Got a giant window here to overlook the city. This is going to be a pretty cool one. So let's go ahead and finish up this building and get someone up here. Don't do it, Dallas. Don't, don't show them your background. To show them more of Starfield. Look at this, though. That is the interior of one of your spaceships in the upcoming Starfield game. Bethesda should start paying me. Microsoft just bought them for seven point something billion dollars. Can you believe that? <laughs> That's why Starfield is actually going to be Xbox and PC exclusive. 
because you want to know something interesting about it, PlayStation was seeking to make Starfield PlayStation exclusive. When Pete Hines, I think head of Xbox, heard about that, he brought up the idea of buying Bethesda and they landed on buying it for $7 billion. <laughs> so that is the story why Starfield is going to be Xbox exclusive. Look at all this. I've already harvested this like twice. I just want a bunch of this because I thought while I'm working around here, I might as well let some of those oxidize because I'm always needing an oxidized copper variant. But anyway, let's head up here real quick. Don't have the villager up here yet, but I've been working in here. Had a little space right here, so I created a door cut out. This can be like a little storage room of some sort, but uh, oh, I put this here so the villager doesn't get out. He's not up here yet, but here's the office. I think this is pretty cool. Very simple. I think whatever workstation I'm gonna give him, just gonna put it right here so he walks up. Put the trapdoor right there so, well, he might be able to jump up. Hope not. Yeah, I forgot the bottom of the new chiseled bookshelves have a great design, and I think it goes great as a ceiling, so. What was I doing? Oh, need trapdoors. Just gonna take away room. Uh, no, you can still squeeze by. I just need, like, some sort of guardrail right here. Yeah. Uh. Please don't crash. Normally I wouldn't mind crashing, but it's usually when I haven't backed up my world after a lot of projects, I get a little worried. It's just not responding. What the heck? Do something. Well, this is where I find out my world is corrupted and errors everywhere. Ah, we're good. I say that. I'm gonna go home later and realize I'm not good. I'll keep that out of mind for now though. <laughs> As you can see, got some water in here. And I went through and dotted in some what looks like drains. Um, now I could lower this a couple more blocks, which I probably will before I get rid of this beacon. But I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I really like the way this looks. Now I gotta, well, I'm not gonna do it now, but I can't wait to start designing this port that we're gonna have here. I've also been working on something else. Um, just this road out here, trying to finally get this going. So I, I want this road to look a little patchy, but as you can see over here, I got a fork in this road here to extend it this way. Had to build up a lot of land here, but I think it looks all right. And I've heavily deforested this area back here because I want all of this around here just to look desolate and bare. This is always satisfying. Oh, the good old lab. So I only have one villager in the simulation, um, so that kind of sucks. So I had to go get KT Pepitone from across the hallway to breed with my one villager. A lot of junk in here. Is this what I'm looking for? I'm trying to make a Fletcher's table. How do you make that again? Flat. Oh, Flint. It's even easier. But I am tired of relying on this village simulation for my villagers. I got one piece of wood. Can I get one more? Yes. Taking a Fletcher's table because I want to see what they look like whenever they grow up. I really like the look of the cleric. I traded with him and I didn't realize you could buy a bottle enchanting, but he has a trade here. So maybe if I bring this guy to the city, we can make a whole factory farming these and put this guy in there. There's a source of emeralds. We can start building an economy in this world. And I think that'd be pretty cool. I mean, we all know I'm pretty far behind when it comes to villager trading and creating an economy in this world. I think now's the time to do it. All right, I believe, well, there's a little room I want to still work on. Bean Co. Factory. I don't want a big giant sign up here because you can't use signs because they're too small and you can't write it with slabs and stairs because that's too big. So this is the in-between, but as you can tell, the L on kelp there, and if you look at the bank sign, it looks fine on this side, but if you look over here, it is just all jacked up. The only letter left is N. So that's just cool to know banners just don't work in bedrock. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave this one unbranded and just leave it right here because not everything has to be branded, but I got the villager up here. It was actually a pretty easy process. I wanna see if he took the, you didn't. Go to sleep. Right there's your bed. I think he took one of our benches, but this is going to be Simon Phillips. Okay, let me go get rid of that bed. I didn't think about that. These benches are gonna be a hassle when trying to get new villagers here. Yeah, he's sleeping. All right, I like it. So I've decided I'm not going to build this place yet, but the next two villagers I bring over here, I'm going to make a mock simulation of a village in here, just doors and beds. Then we can go ahead and start bringing up a lot of villagers right here. Instead of doing it in my village simulation, trying to haul them all the way over here. 
Bean company is looking pretty good. I like it. Let's go build something else. I've been working at the very other end of the canal here, mainly getting rid of a big mass of land here because I need room to build a crane out of these materials. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like this. So the idea of my crane, it's gonna be a structure that goes up like this. It's gonna have a sliding mechanism on it that looks like it comes down, picks up a crate, pulls up and can drop it off here. Thing is though, is I don't know how far out I want this to go into the ocean, but perhaps I should figure that out first. All right, I got the outer frame done. How's that look? Wow, looks better than I thought, honestly. I thought with all this orange, it would stick out a little bit too much, but I think I want the docks to really have a lot of equipment that's mainly built out of orange, just to make it to look like construction equipment, but we're not done yet. I gotta build the grippers on here. I'm just gonna make a system that looks like it slides back and forth on this and can lower down and lift it up. Might even put a crate right here. Okay, let's build that. And there it is. I like that. I just went with something that looks like magnets instead of grippers. I kind of like that. Could run through and add even more detail, such as maybe changing up some of these concrete blocks with let's say like a white wool block or a bone block just to change up the texture. As of right now, I like it. Um, this will just give me a good idea of how to shape these docks when I finally do it. Again, this is a good opportunity to expand the land too. I don't just have to follow this coastline. I could simply expand it this far out into the ocean to give myself more building room. So I'll keep that in mind. Okay, I wanna head back down here and I wanna build another cool looking trailer and add another iron golem inside and give him a name. But I really want to get, oh, any new seeds? I came in here and there were like six seeds on the ground. And remember, there's only two sniffers here, so that was pretty surprising. This one, I want to make a cyber runner almost type container. Maybe this is where they're acquiring all of their knowledge. They like link up. And I was even thinking maybe eventually over time, I could mess with the iron golem texture and start making them look like they have wires running out of their head down their back, but start making them look a little more advanced, get rid of this green on them. I thought that'd be kind of interesting to follow the lore of my world. They have a lot of body space, so I think it'd be pretty fun to mess around with the textures. Almost look like they're modifying their bodies in a way. But anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and build this into a really cool trailer. All right, let's swoop on down here. I finished this container. No more seeds? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I really like the way this turned out. So I made it to where you walk in here. Maybe this is the main power supply. Flip on this lever because that's totally a lever. Um, but yeah, turns into here. I just put as many screens as I wanted. I didn't want to go overboard. I could literally put so many screens in here, but well, to be honest, there was one point where I placed one screen and my world dropped to two frames per second for like five seconds and it just scared me for some reason. It was like, has it finally had enough? Is there too much stuff in my world? So, I don't know. I just went with a few screens, but it's very, I mean, there's still a lot in here. I really like the way it looks. So maybe this is where they code and learn things, who knows? And back here is where the iron golems come. They can connect to these wires and upload certain new things to their systems. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a guy down in here. I guess right here, I'm just gonna do something like this for up. Oh, okay, just like that. Yeah, that goes well. Just don't want the iron golems to escape, obviously, or get hurt. Is this enough room? Think you'll survive in here? Good, your name's gonna be T1I Brendan Tenhaf. I like it. I don't know, I just liked the last name on him. He sounded like maybe someone who codes and walks all over his own machines. Sweet. Now, next, I'm, well, not today, but I want to make the throne room who runs this area, and then we'll put that villager in there. I might get rid of this out here, but no, no, I don't, because I really like, every time I look at it, it's like, is that too much? But then it looks really cool. Ah, it's raining. I stopped by the apartments. Hey, 
How are you doing? Huh. Mr. Farzenfar. Forgot about him. I forgot that this is actually- Oh. That would terrify me if it woke up to that. But I forgot that's actually Farzy the YouTuber. I'm glad he's still doing good. What about you? Oh, you're just staring out the window. Mr. Forehand. Huh. I'm glad you're doing good too. I changed my book. It used to be called Donor Villagers. It's now just called my Citizen's Book because not all villagers. We got it pretty up to date. We're filling them up pretty fast. If you haven't noticed, I've been doing like two an episode now, which is what I prefer to do because it gets you guys in my world quicker. So we're going to keep doing that every episode, probably like one to two villagers each episode. Ah, what a beautiful morning. I'm going to go ahead and answer today's comment, which isn't really a question, but it's from K Van Kovic. 4734. I feel like Dallas is doing another Let's Play on his original Let's Play, and that's pretty interesting to watch. Oh, look at the sunshine on that book. But yeah, that is actually the whole point of this city. I actually thought of that right before I started making it. Because I was on the verge of creating a new Let's Play. I love my world, but I just needed a change in pace. I can't wait to start working on this town again. We're keeping this one a bit old-timey, if you couldn't tell. And I'm gonna keep doing it that way. This one's not gonna be futuristic like the other one over there. It'll slowly transition into a more modern take of a city. But yeah, I couldn't stand the idea of starting a newer Let's Play because you have to go through that immense grind of getting tons of diamonds, going netherite mining, getting all of your materials, just everything it takes to finally get to the point where you can start doing big mega builds like this. But why would I want to go through the process and do all that when I could literally just go away from the main area of my world and feel like I started a new Let's Play? Because honestly, it feels like that out here. And I just love the lore of this world so much, what we're doing. Like, we've advanced from Slime Science Center and we're using our resources to build a city and we're getting citizens here. You have no idea how much I've been enjoying this lately. There better be two sniffers in here. There is. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it too, because I was even thinking at some point, I might even... No, I can't do that. How's it looking here? This looks pretty cool. What was I gonna say? Well, I was thinking <laughs> at some point in my world, I'd move here, move all of my stuff here, eventually make a building mine where I move all of my resources from my house over here, and call it quits over here in somewhat maybe get rid of most of the torches and lights throughout this house. And I'd mainly keep it the same. I'd just make it look abandoned a little bit and just make it maybe look like we moved out. Add cobwebs, more vines taken over the place. Now this is if I'm gonna be on this world for another three to four years. I might end up doing that. Oh, this looks, this is a cool view from here. But like, move into the city type of deal. You know, just the next chapter in my life. Everyone has chapters, and I most certainly want to move on with a few things. I can't d stay here forever, you know? I mean, heck, a decade of my real life has already gone into this. It's about time we do something different. But hey, let's thank some donors, why won't we? Radoslaw Gold Bizzik. Bizzik. Radoslaw Gold Bizzik. That's such a cool name. <laughs> thank you for your donation. And... Fantisaurus, thank you for your kind donation as well. I appreciate it. And a huge donation from Jackson Neffley. Dang, Jackson. I really appreciate that. You made it into the Citizen's Book. Who knows? Maybe you'll be the leader of the cargo... What am I calling it? Shipment Container Village. Maybe you'll be there because I've been picking names at random. I appreciate that huge donation. And as well, Jasper Steeman with a huge donation. You didn't have to do that, Jasper. I read your message attached. I read all the messages. That was very kind of you. Yeah, you know what, Jasper? I need to check up on you too. Speaking of checking up on villagers, we've only had one person die, and that is Jack McCartan. He was living in the engine out in the wastelands, um, and I didn't make it super safe, so that's why he perished. But like I said, becoming a citizen in this world, if you die, you die, which has me thinking, I think I want to make a new graveyard soon, and this is going to be the graveyard we dedicate to the people who have died. I think Jasper's still doing good, mainly because he's in a literal trash can. You got the good stuff? Hey, Jasper, how you doing? Where's your cowboy hat? You used to have a hat on. Ah, let me see in your barrel. What's that? You got fish? You're out? You're out of the stuff? I'll be back soon, okay? Who's that? Did you kill someone? I was gonna make a check on him. Looks like he's still doing good. Hey, buddy. 
You're staring off into the wilderness. I understand. Simple Rick. Alrighty, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. I'm going to hang out with Rick for a little bit, talk about some stories. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.